I'm going to record to the cloud. Okay, so we're recording. We're on Facebook Live as well. Just making sure everything's all working. And yes, we've got a few people viewing us live on the Facebook group as well. And yes, Trevor, we are going to do uh, New York next year. We're going to do a training event, a two-day training event. So, so let's get started. Um, uh, lots of new people here today, a lot of them trade station. Uh, but um, first of all, uh, I want to make a very special announcement. JW Snell uh, has joined Trade the Fifth. I was so impressed with how quickly he took to the indicator suites. And not only that, they helped him go full-time trading, plus the amount of work that he's done to help people integrate the trading uh, platforms into, um, you know, into their, uh, into their trading career, if you like. He's done such a good job that we offered him a position of the director of trading, trading, sorry, uh, and he's accepted, so he's part of the team. So I'm going to introduce him again when I've just gone through this a little bit, and he's going to take over and talk about um, the trade station version and how to set that up and everything. So, um, so yeah, I'm very, very, very pleased about this. He's a great guy, uh, very good trader, and he's took to it like a duck to water. Okay, so first of all, I wanted to do uh, a quick run through of the um, sound a bit sound is a bit low. Turn the volume up, Marius. Everybody else hear me okay? Yeah. Pump up the volume, Marius. Parfait. Okay, so just going to go through the new version. It's on the MT4 platform, and I did promise uh, quite a few people that it would be recorded and they can see it. So this is the MT4 platform, mainly used in Europe and Asia uh, for Forex, commodities, that sort of thing, uh, and the indexes as well. So this is what it looks like. It's very, very, very similar to everything that you do everywhere else. Um, this is SMP 500 on the daily time frame. You can see here, um, we have just come down, uh, hit the fifth wave for that previous eye, and then this year we've been on this move. And I can isolate the wave count by just clicking reset and click here, which is pretty awesome, really, compared to some of the um, platforms. Uh, and as you can see right now, um, we just on, we've just come into the wave four zone today. This is what I, I wrote an article, did some analysis on the SMP for this year. And we are on a, on a wave four pullback on the daily time frame for this. We've got some good support levels coming up here and here. Uh, you know, we this is a great wave four. Stochastic's not quite crossed over in the oversold zone yet. So this um, this is uh, no, we can't. Trevor, I'm afraid. Think Swim has its little things, and we can't change that. Um, so. We've got the false breakout stochastic, which is part of the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite on the bottom here. And you can see, obviously, this year, we've got these false breakout dots on the top there. Very, very strong uh, bullish trend. And right now, we are getting towards that oversold zone. Uh, yes, you can reset with TradeStation, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through that with James in a little while. Uh, so you can see this wave, the, the wave four pulling back now. We've got some good support levels here. Uh, just draw those in a little bit. Um, you know, that sort of level here and here as well. So for me, green, amber zone, we should find support. The, the 535, the oscillator is good. It's down below now. It's way within the 140, um, 9140, just need a little bit more. I think we really need to come down, down back down to this sort of level, 27, 21, somewhere around there. So it's a big, quite a big negative, negative day today. We're going to look at uh, a different chart on uh, on Think or Swing. So we've got some more levels on there. But again, it's very, very, very simple. So if I just reduce that one and we go to another chart and we go for a, you know a currency pair, for example. The good thing about MT4, if you're trading currencies, you can literally grab hold of the currency, 
drag it into the chart and it changes the chart for you just like that. Really, really, really good. Um, you know, there are and some uh, issues with MT4 like every other platform, but there are some good things as well. So when we click on here, we can isolate. Uh, we can isolate the wave count. I don't like this big dip here. Let's go to the five minute on Euro. Ooh, yes, see. Uh, so we can reset wave counts here um, or further back, that sort of thing here. We, you know, when you get these range bound periods, these are no good. That's not trending. Remember, Elliott Wave is all about trending. Okay, we, this is not trending right now. Uh, let's look at another currency pair, which may be, uh, let me just move that out a little bit. So just do five more minutes or so on this because it's important that people see that this Elliott Wave Indicator Suite performs just as good on the um, MT4 platform and it's, and it's useful. Um, let's go for, I tell you what, let's go for gold. That was a massive move today, didn't it? Um, that's what you call a parabolic move. <laughs> Uh, there's no black box for MT4, that's why, Trevor, uh, because the black box breakout indicator uh, really relies on um, volume and price action, and you don't get the volume in, um, in Forex, okay? So dollar, Juan, okay, Do they, have they got it on this platform? Um, doesn't look like they've got it. Let me just have a quick look down here. Yeah, US dollar CNH. There we go. On the five minutes, let's isolate down at the lows. Hit the fifth wave, gone flat now on the five minutes. This will look like on the 30 minute, this flat, yeah. Four hour. Yeah, it's been quite parabolic, hasn't it, really? Let me just switch the notifications off on my phone. Do apologize. Very not very professional there. Um, I think this performs pretty well. It's just had a parabolic move at the moment. This was the recent move, and now it's gone parabolic. Crude, uh, we're going to go to crude on uh, on another platform, but we can have a quick look now to see how it performs on here. And that is... Crude oil. Uh, we're going to go... Brent crude, there we go. Five minutes. Whoa, what a day. Ah, the, we'll, we'll have a look at the black box on the other indicator suite soon uh, because I can pretty much say there's been a bit of a, uh, there must have been a black box there at some stage on a lower time frame. Yes, I do, Damien. So if we go to, I don't know, an hourly on, on oil, this isn't trending at the moment, okay, on this time frame. Um, we go to daily. I just want to try and find an example. So if I just zoom out on oil on the daily, we've got this V happening at the moment. That's a really long trend. If I isolate at the top here, we can see the wave four has already broken out the red zone. So it's no good. So what we do is we've got a current trend. Let's, let's, let's see where we are on this current trend. Let's isolate at these lows and see where we are. Let's zoom in now. We've had a wave four pullback on the daily on oil. We find in really good support. 535 is pulled back. It's crowned between 90 and 140. Um, you know, we've got crossed over round about there. I would like it to come a bit deeper. I don't think it's deep enough. It's not crossed over in the oversold zone, if you have a look there. So, you know, it's pretty good. It's been a good day for shorting oil, I must admit, by the looks of it. Um, 
yeah, isolating at the low is really important. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I just wanted to do that quick introduction on the MT4 uh, platform. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find James. I'm going to unmute him. Uh, hi, James. Can we test your sound? How about now? You there, James? I can't hear you at the moment. How about now, Paul? I can see the mic going up and down. Okay, I can't. Why is that? Maybe because I'm... Okay, no problem there. It's obviously because I'm talking as well. I can't hear him. So what I'm going to do, James, I'm going to make... I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to make James the host, the hostess or the mostess. James, start sharing your screen. Okay. Right. So let me know on the chat if you can see James's screen. I still can't hear him. Can you hear me now? Okay. How about now, Paul? Okay. For some reason, I can't hear him, but we'll get we'll get going. So. Um, so James, over to you. Yes. Uh, can everybody hear me and see my screen? Can everybody hear me? That's true. How about now? Can everybody hear me now? Paul, can you hear me? Hello. Paul, can you hear me? I apologize, everybody. We ran through this earlier and it worked just fine. Okay, somebody just texted me and said that they can hear me, so I can't hear anyone else. So we're going to go through this. Um, we're going to go through TradeStation as if you were starting from scratch. So this is just a setup I've used in the past, and then this is the new stuff. So here we go. The, you're going to create a – the first thing that you're going to do every day – before you start TradeStation is you're gonna, you have to have TradeStation shut down and then you're gonna click your window start button, click documents, your C drive, program files x86, you're gonna go down to TradeStation 9.5, you're gonna click program and then on your cache, just right click and delete. Now it's not gonna let me do it because I have it open, but that's how you start every day out with clearing your cache. Once you open up TradeStation, we're gonna pretend like we're starting brand new. We're gonna have a new workspace. Your trading apps button over here, if I can get this to work. And technical difficulties with TradeStation. Let's do.
Paul, I'm going to have to give it back to you for a second. Paul, I'm going to have to give it back to you for a second and restart TradeStation. Okay, James. I can hear you now. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right, Trevor, let me answer you. Um, yeah, I mean, TradeStation is an issue. It's about clearing the cash and everything. Um, it's not it's not a, a robust uh, platform, um, but clearing the cash, uh, 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 everything like that, keeping the data set only back to five days on, um, on there, you know, when you're looking back for day trading, um, that's that's the best way to do it. You don't need to look back any further. Uh, next, uh, okay. So uh, other platforms we're we're actually developing right now for Trading View. Um, right now, okay. Um, we are going to be talking to, to other brokers when we are actually in Chicago as well. I can't mention those right now. Um, so we are looking to roll it out to as many as we can. It just takes time because every single platform has its own little nuances um, and everything like that. It's really, really difficult. Okay. okay. Well, I'm, I'm, is my okay. up now? Yeah. All right. I'll and put myself on mute. Yeah. Uh, Trade Station is having its issues today. That uh, I'm going to have to shut it down again. Okay. Shall I take over and do a little bit of think or swim then? Yes. Why don't you do that and I'll work on the Trade Station. Okay. You need to give me back uh, the hosting. All right. So we can record. So in the participants bit, click on your on my name and uh, change me as host. If you can do that, because at the moment it's still recording you. I'm trying. Oh, hang on, I'll do it. Reclaim host. There we go. There we go. You want to, I'll mute me, mute myself out and I'll work on this trade station. Okay. Right, guys, let's bring Think or Swim over and we'll go through Think or Swim. Let's share screen. Yeah, training views proving to be difficult, but we've got the developer working on it now. So, guys, what you need to do is let me know that you can see my screen. Okay, cool. So, uh, I've got ES and YM on here on TradeStation. I uh, just want to go through a, a few uh, things for, for day trading first. So, um, I'm going to maximize ES, for example. Uh, I mean, it's been a pretty pretty down day to do. So this is the five minute time frame. So we gap down at the beginning of this week's session here, and we can see now we're on a wave three. So unsure of how or where to isolate. If we get a gap down, we're almost having a reset now. If we'd have had a low at this point and then moved higher, we'd have taken the low after the gap down, but we didn't. What we did get was a continuation, a really big move down here. So the where to isolate is these highs just before the move down. This is the start of the trend, really, how we're going to do the wave caps. And uh, so, you know, when we're looking at the Elliott wave, we're looking at where to isolate. Let's just take that off. Now, on TradeStation, you have to put it at one. On Think or Swim, you have to put it at zero, and you can click Apply, and that starts us that starts us off at the beginning of the data set. Okay, this is a um, the 
five, five minute, five day. Okay. So it gives me, I'm on a wave three now. That's pretty obvious. It's just been huge. Okay. But we can isolate there. What we can do is go to the, the high here and that is candle number for me anyway, 1350. So on trade station, I go there and I change it to 1350. So I've isolated at those recent highs. And to be honest, you know, that's where my isolation is going to be until we get there. So as you can see there, we've had the one, the two, we're on the three, and we've got a wave four pullback there. So again, it's about understanding that um, we are on here. We've got to isolate at those highs because we've just started the week. We've had a gap down, and this is the trend we're interested in right now. OK, we're interested if there's a wave for pullback against there. There isn't at the moment. OK, has there been other trading opportunities on ES on the five minute for the black box breakout indicator? So the difference, why they work together. Um, did you isolate at these highs, Kai? from Friday, and this is now in a wave C. I mean, to be honest, it's probably pretty close because with this is range bound period all here. We're only coming down here right now, okay? Kai, are you using TradeStation, Think or Swim, Ninja Trader, TOS? Okay, now for me, my bar count's gonna be different to yours, okay? You put it at zero. You need to isolate at this high here, okay? So when you put your cursor on this, okay, in the oscillator box, you've got the wave count in yellow where my cursor is there. So as I move my cursor across, you'll see the bar number change. And for me, the bar number is 1350, 1350, there's 1351. Okay, so when I've put my cursor there, I see down in this green box here, this, sorry, with the yellow writing in the oscillator, okay, the number of the bar. So that in this case is 1350. There's a no missing. So if you move it to the right, you'll see 1351. I go to the beaker, I click on Elliott Wave version 3. And I put the start bar position to 1350. Okay. Well, you're looking too far back then. <laughs> Are you on a five minute? Yeah. I bet you're on 10 day rather than five day, but it doesn't really matter as long as you get the right bar number. Okay. Because it counts from the left right from the first bar on your data set. So mine's only 1,350 because I'm five minute, five day. So okay, when I've done that, I click apply, and that's why you've got a C wave on there because you're looking back further than five days. Uh, and in reality, when you're day trading, there's no need to look uh, back any further than that. Okay, so now we have, we're on a wave three, we'll wait for a wave four pullback. At this moment in time, there's no trade there. It's about being patient. But what we do know from our false breakout stochastic is we've got a very strong bearish trend. So if it does pull back up against there into that um, probability pullback zones. Okay, Neil, on a day, on a chart for a daily time frame, you need to look back two years. Okay. So this is how we get to use the black box and the Elliott Wave together. So Elliott Wave, there's nothing, there's no trade there for us moment on the five minute or anything. We've just been one direction only. So if we zoom in a little bit here, once we are going one direction, we don't really have a strong pullback in a day. We look for black box breakouts. We have not had one on the five minutes. So what I'm going to do is going to go to my flexible grid, which is pretty cool. And I'm going to look at two minutes and three minutes to see what sort of um, signals there were. Okay, so again, I've got a, I've got a, 
a flexible grid on here. So I've got the five minute on the bottom left here, which has got black box and Elliott wave count. You can see down there on the wave three. I've got the three minutes here just with black box because I only trade black box off the three minute there. Okay. And I've got my two minute with black box here. Now, for me, there has been no trades today. Why? You see this big blue zone here. This is my big support zone that I um, that I've uh, put on uh, my charts. And it, if I'm going into that and this 280R for the black box, there's going to be a lot of support there. So it's one of those days where you just sit back and you don't trade. Yeah. The guess what? The markets are open tomorrow and the next day and the day after that as well. So when we're, when we're approaching these big support levels, there's no any of the real big moves there. You can get small scalping moves. Uh, and we go to the three minute here. I'll show you how to do the flexible grid in a minute. Um, you know, there's been some little trades, okay? So this one coming down here, you wouldn't have taken this because you took the stop out for the order. But this one, big wide spread there again. You're not going to go for that one either. And we're into this congestion zone. Now, I'm going to be teaching how to put all these specific levels on uh, in Kansas, and we're going to or we're going to talk about that in a little while. But these zones that I draw on are very, very, very important. Um, so this is for me a non-trading day on ES. Now, Ala, flexible grid at the top of your chart here, where my cursor is. Hopefully, you can see it. Um, you've got charts. So this is the charts that you're on uh, with your, and you can have your um, your watch list there as well. So you know RTY. There's a there's a there's a signal RTY for a short forming right now, for example, uh, which has already gone. It's it's in. Um, but then when you look to the right of charts, you've got flexible grid. So when you click on flexible grid, you can actually, these little squares here, okay, you can uh, put as many squares as you want in there, that flexible grid. And what you can do, if you click on here, you can actually detach that flexible grid as well, okay? If I detach it, I've got another copy of that and I can go and put it on another screen, okay? So really, really, really uh, flexible. Um, it, you know, think or swim in, in what you can do. Uh, and if I draw a, a draw a, a, a fib retracement or one of these zones, no matter what chart I open on what instance of think or swim, it will appear. Okay. Yes, the heart, yeah, uh, uh, Jada was going to show you how to do the black box on the radar screen and everything like that. Um, so, so flexible grids there. You can choose the, 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 you know, how many you put on there and all that sort of thing. You can, um, you know, you can really arrange that flexible grid as and when you want. So if I customize the grid here, I can add another grid there, okay? I can other, add another grid down below. I can just use as many as, as, I, can, as I want to, really. Um, so let's go back to the charts. Let's go to CL. CL's been a good day to trade today, I think. Um, the beauty is with futures, if you've got indexes just going one way, uh, um, you know, we can um, trade other futures as well. So oil has gone one way today I had a nice fifth wave move during um, the overnight session and sometimes those overnight sessions especially with oil are pretty good purely because there's a lot of oil traders in Europe and in Asia and we do get some movement uh, I mean some I know some um, futures traders do long hours um, but look at this black box breakout signal there 6178 okay 6178, all of the multiple time frame dot cloud is green. We've got the signal, we came down, bounced off the cloud, didn't get a signal, came back down to test the cloud again, got the signal. 6178, the wave three 
was at 62.68. Yeah, I, oil's very good. Uh, but this is a 90 point move, 90 tick move. Yeah, abs yes, Neil. Yeah, he was. Uh, that was the cause. Absolutely. I, I was in uh, three energy stocks that were in great profit on my swing trading. They were doing well today. And I took them all off as soon as that court came out. Um, so, you know, I, I, I'm all out now of, um, of my swings at the moment. I'm totally risk free. Um, so then we've had the fifth wave overnight. And then this is where we are right now. But on smaller time frames, if we go to the three minutes here, those little new up there we go on the three minutes. We had whoa, 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 just it's just taking time to recalculate. Bear with me. So when you get a parabolic move, you've got to look at multiple time frames to really catch these. This was the trade, 62.70, and we are at 60.71. That was a good enough trade to finish the month off, go to the beach, pack up for the month, okay? Um, this is the trade. CL, three minute, black box breakout here. Uh, we, you know, as soon as that news came out, we didn't get a signal on the five minute. We got one on the three minute here, 62.70, and it just kept going. Now, one thing I like to do is I have both the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite and the black box on here because I would use my six ball moving average high from the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite as my trailing stock position, this green moving average. Look. It's not even been taken out, taken out yet, okay? Now that is really, really good. But all I do, uh, Neil, is I just, I keep my trailing stop at this position. So at this moment in time, okay, my 6-4 moving average high, for this um, current bar position is at 61.02, okay? I will not move it up. I will only move it down to protect more profit. So this is the beauty of using them both together. It's about trade management as well. You can be conservative and use the cloud, okay? More aggressive, especially when you get a parabolic move like this, is using the 6-4 moving average high. It's not been taken out yet. So 6102 now is my trailing stop to lock in what is 100 and whatever ticks, okay? Um, and I will never move it back up again. I'm always protecting profits. One of the things I like to do is make a trade risk-free as soon as possible, um, you know, sensibly, and then I, I can sort of let it run if you like. Okay, so... Um, that's CL. So the index at the moment gone one way. YM, I look, like the look of that pullback on YM. We didn't get a signal on the black box. You see, on a day like this, Elliott Wave, uh, you're not going to get that fifth wave. This is why we designed the black box breakout indicator for days like this. CL, prime example, that would have made your month, those two trades. Uh, what we could do now, if we just go on the three minute for YM, because what the black box can do is look for small pullbacks, okay? Small, and we did, well, I mean, this is recalculating again and again. Okay, just give it a little while. Okay, so we didn't have a breakout coming down here. Let's go to the two minute. I'm not gonna go back to the flexible grid. I'm just gonna change this time frame here. Um, Okay, yeah, we got, there we go. We got a signal recently on the two minute and it's just got to finish calculating. Um, it will finish in a minute. Again, these working together uh, takes a lot of calculations, but it does. 
So there you go. Uh, you've got your two, three, and your five on your flexible grid on your, you can have it on your watch list. You can have it uh, the charts there. And you can see on this uh, two minute time frame. very recently, we had the short signal for 25294. Okay. And then we've just been going down ever since. Nice, nice move actually. Um, you know, we're, we're coming up to 80, 80 ticks there. Uh, so really, really nice. So the trading stop on YM, okay, I, the first pullbacks happened. We got a slightly higher uh, resistance level. We then come down, we pull back again. So first sort of reasonable trading stop position would be really st sticking to the cloud because we've not gone parabolic, okay? So I follow the cloud down with my trailing stop, trailing stop. Now we are in a decent profit making position. Now I can become more aggressive because we've gone more parabolic and we've moved away from the cloud. I can now use my six four moving average high for the trailing stop position on YM. I've got to take into account this pivot point here as well. Okay, it's not, we can't be blind to this. It did reject those highs very well. So my trailing stop at this moment in time is probably 25 to 60. Okay, if we get further movement down, uh, more than three candles away, I will start to then use this six four moving average high again. Okay. Yes, I did. Sorry. I, what I do, uh, again, I'm going to be teaching this in Kansas. Um, I frame a lot of stuff, Damien. Okay. I frame a lot of stuff from multiple time frames. One of the things I'm going to be teaching in Kansas at the live event is multiple time frame strategy. Because uh, uh, framing, uh, whether it's a futures contract or a stock or anything else, that, um, you know, really, really, helped me make decisions. That's right, yeah, when it pulls back, so you can have smaller pullbacks against the trend on the black box, it bounces off the cloud, and then, Scott, you get that uh, breakout signal. Um, but one, what happens is, um, for a wave four pullback, you've got to pull back deeper into those pullback zones, okay? Um, so if you've got a really parabolic day and it's not pulling back, you've got to look for those smaller pullbacks, and this is where the black box comes in. Okay, Neil, so why I use it? Because um, it's, it's a more aggressive, this two, you, again, it's a personal choice. Um, when we look at YM here, it's not broken the cloud all day. And a conservative trailing stop going down here would be the cloud, okay? It takes time, Jamil, you go. I spent five years scratching my head losing money when I first started, okay? It's only been the last 12 to 15 years that I've been really profitable and doing this uh, to make a living. Um, and this is why I developed this software because it basically mimics what I do. Uh, so you know, when you when you look at ES, it's been very um, very aggressive move down today. Uh, CL was even more. This is a good. You know, I want to use this example. Um, no, it's not. It's not an Ichimoku cloud. It's our W five T EMA cloud. Okay, it's not an Ichimoku cloud. Okay, it's our special EMA cloud. So this has been parabolic today. So as you can see, the price action, Neil, is moving away from the cloud. So you could be very conservative and just follow the high of the cloud there. But once you start to get that divergence here, you really need to consider pulling a tighter stop on there using the six ball moving average. Because what you don't want is a really deep pullback now to test the cloud you're going to lose too many ticks. So what you need to do is be more aggressive when you get this divergence between the cloud and the six four moving average high and be more aggressive with your trailing stop. Uh, 
Okay. So, Ala, how do you switch between time frames without having to adjust MTF, please? Okay. So, what you need to do is you need to set up a flexible grid or your charts with those MTF dot clouds on. Okay. So, for example, on the flexible grid here, um, I need to get rid of that one. I need to get rid of that one. Okay. So, on my flexible grid, let me just. Sorry about that. That's my ringtone. Um, I don't customize grid. So on my two-minute time frame, on my five-minute, on my uh, three-minute, they're pretty much all going to be the same for day trading. Okay. So they're all going to be five. The, the, the top row is always five minutes. So let's go back to the chart. There's just one chart on there. It's easier. So when I go to the MTF dark cloud here, so for, that's the wrong one. I'll pick the right one in a minute. So 10, 15, 20, 20, 30, or 10, 15, 20, 30, 30. This period here, and then it's the other way around in TradeStation, you work down, again, it's different platforms. But the top time frame on the dot cloud here, the first row of dots where my cursor is, that's always the current time frame that you're on. So whether it's a five minute chart, a three minute chart, or a two minute chart, it automatically sets that. And then 10 minutes is the next row, 15 is the next, 20 is the next, and then there's a gap where that other 20 is, and then 30 is your key time frame. So whether you're trading off the three, the two, the five minute, they're the settings that you need. So again, the first row below the squares here is always the time frame that you're on. And then next you need 10, 15, 20, 30. Uh, Richard, it, start, it goes from the top and goes down on TradeStation. In, uh, in, uh, in Think or Swim, it's bottom going up. <laughs> okay, so the squares and the triangles, um, that means all four, of these time frames are in the red. Okay, it's just a quick um, a quick reference, if you like. Um, the significance of the bottom row that is the most important row, Neil. That is your key time frame. You are you know you are not going to go short until that bottom time frame is red. That key time frame is important. So. For example, when we had this potential fifth wave move overnight, people traded it, our bottom time frame on the multiple time frame dot cloud was green. So on the 30 minute time frame, the price action was above the cloud on that time frame. Gives us confidence in this long fifth wave move. As it was, the entry was outside the six four moving average high and it plowed straight into the target. Quick 10, less than 10 minutes and you're on. Uh, with Ninja, it's, 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 we'll do that in a second, Neil. On day trading, 30 minutes, Neil, the key time frame. No, Damien, it's two separate indicators. We've got the Elliott Wave indicator suite which is the Elliott Waves, the, pull, the pullback zones, the stochastic and uh, the, the oscillator, and then the black box is a multiple time frame and there. So two strategies totally separate to each other, but I combine them on one chart, okay? Right, the colors of the candles, let's go through these and now, I'm just going to go over to stocks just to show you more um, it, it clearer. Okay, so bear with me. And I'm going to go on the daily time frame because I just want to zoom out on something and just go through that. Okay, so I'm going to go to uh, XEL on the daily time frame. All uh, right, I've also now got my. Um, my Elliott Wave and my black box on this one. And we're gonna talk about the colors of the dots, but what I'm gonna do first is just put the normal volume on so you can see, 
Okay, so I'm going to go to equities. I'm going to put the volume subchart on. I'm going to click apply. Okay, so when we have, I'm going to go through different colours. When we have a green candle, that is an up candle with increased volume from the previous candle. When we have a grey candle, grey volume down here, you see, it's an up candle, but with lower volume than the previous candle, which is important. A red candle is a down candle with increased volume to the previous candle. A cyan candle is a down candle with less volume than the previous one. Now, these are important. Why? Because these help us decide when we've got a good black box breakout signal. Okay. And we can understand when we're actually looking at a trade as well, uh, that we might be running out of juice. So for example, we look at the big move on Friday on XEL that took us over 100%. Okay. Then we look at the move today. We've got the new highs. Oil's just crapped itself. And now we're starting to come back down again. So and we've got lower volume. If this, I've already, I'm already at take a profit on this already today. But what I'm trying to show you is it, it sort of runs out of juice here. Or well, then we get opposing high volumes here, but nowhere to go. And then we get the low volume pullback. Be confident this pullback's not going to go and take the stop out because it's low volume. And then we get a low volume update. What do we get the next day? Big boom. Okay. So it's really for the black box, but it helps me understand what's going off with the stock or, or futures as well. So we go back to futures now. We can see now, let me go to, what did we get the signal on? Three minutes? Was it three minutes on the black box? It was. Okay, I just want to, there we go. So the, the black box signal works on our black box technology, but you will see it's the first red candle here after some really low volume candles here. Cyan, 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 gray. High volume uh, candle was not followed through. Low volume, high volume down candle not followed through. Cyan, cyan. Now we get an increase in volume. We get the contraction in price action, and we get our signal. Okay, then we get increased volume to the downside. The next candle, then the uh, next candle, more volume than the previous candle as well. We get in, you know, closes near the low. So you're seeing that volume build up and that momentum. We get the traditional little doji there with lower volume, and then that's followed by high volume again. Okay, uh, so these can help you uh, manage the trade as well. If you're going to get some really low volume dojis in there. There's some major indecision tight in your stops. Again, all this is going to be covered in Kansas. It's a, you know, this is a two day training event. There's a lot to learn. Um, but, you know, this is, you know, right now we've pulled back on oil to the cloud. Okay. So our trailing stop has been taken out. Okay. 61.01 was the trailing stop there. Obviously, we've moved it to that candle, moved it to that candle. It's broken this one here at 60.90. Now we've pulled back. We don't know if it's going to break back through, but if it holds, we get a signal coming back down and go short again. Yes, that is your entry there with the bubble and the line. That is your stop loss. We do it all for you. All we don't do is give you the trading stop positions. We give you some targets. Target one, two, three, and four, but on a parabolic day, it just blows through them. Just really does blow through them. We do, but remember, I'm looking on the multiple time frames here, and I'm looking at news events, and that's where I that's where I go. Okay, I wasn't that I wouldn't have waited. Green arrow, green arrow, green arrow. Where am I looking? Okay, this is stochastic green arrow. Okay, the green arrow isn't for the black box breakout indicator. Again, you've got your trading stop here anyway. 
This is a stochastic moving away from that oversold zone, moving away from the false breakouts that we, we have on there. Okay, it's moved sufficient enough away to produce an arrow. This time was a false and it came back down again. The second arrow was enough to push it back up again. So Amir, the, the, the stochastic is part of the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite. That helps us get those entries for those fifth wave moves. But what it also does when we've got a black box breakout like this, you've got to think, we've got a green arrow here. The stochastic's moved over a certain percentage. This could be pulling up. I need to make sure my stop is just above the 6-4 moving average high there. Yeah, tighten up. Absolutely. Okay. And it comes again down here. You've got to be ready. And look, that's now that's what happened here. Stochastic's going back into the overbought zone. Now, we're getting a red candle form, but it's got to close outside of the, can, uh, of the cloud there for us to get a signal. It didn't this time. Okay. So, James, um, let me just, uh, where's James? Hang on a minute, guys. I'm here. Hopefully, it'll work this time. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so I'm just going to make you the host so it records yours. Okay, so in theory now, if you could, you can, should be able to share your screen uh, if I stop sharing mine. Okay. There we go. All right, hopefully, trade station. All right, trade station. Let me see if it'll let me. Paul, it's actually a, uh, using trade station in the uh, webinar is not yeah. letting the drop down menu down. I can, uh, luckily, I still have my other space open so we can use it. Okay. So, so it's not totally gone. Uh, basically, guys, if I'm going to go through as if you were starting with a brand new workspace. I like to create a couple workspaces down below where you'll have those two minute, three minute, four minute, five minute, uh, 10, 15, 30, and 60 timeframes. You can split them up with more workspaces down below here. I mean, you literally just new workspace and you can name this one, uh, you know, 15 minute and 30 minute and 60 minute. So, and then you could insert those chart analysis on here that's already on here. So for instance, if I wanted to install the Elliott Wave from scratch, I'm gonna go in here and remove. Let's go in here and remove. I'm going to take everything off if it was a brand new window. So the first thing you're going to do is right click and insert analysis technique. Now these are in here right now, but obviously they wouldn't be on your computer if you're first starting. You TradeStation does not like working on a webinar. You get. I, th I think you know the, the the installation video shows how to import them. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I will videos. shoot new. I'm going to shoot new videos today, uh, everybody, on how to do this. I'm going to break them down into some smaller videos on downloading them from your email. Um, some issues that people have run into, um, they don't find them in their downloaded folder. Um, I like to put them on the desktop in a folder named, uh, you know, with W5T, that way you know where they're at. As soon as we get off of this webinar, everybody, I will shoot new videos. It will take me less than an hour, and then Paul will put these up uh, on the site where you can go through all of them. And if you got any specific questions, you guys can put it in the chat box. I'll put the screen back over to you, Paul. You need to make me host. Oh, I saw. I, I can reclaim. I can reclaim yeah. host. There we go. 
Okay. So obviously, I mean, TradeStation is, um, you know, we developed for it um, and it's not a bad platform. It's just, it's not robust. Can you see my screen, everybody? It's got a CL chart on it. Okay, cool. Let me just put JW on mute. Oops, that's me. Okay. Right, so I just want to bring over the Ninja Trader because we've got some number, uh, Ninja Trader users, yeah? Here. So TradeStation not behaving too well in the webinar. We will try and sort it out for next time. And James is going to make a load of videos on TradeStation anyway. Uh, but what I want to do now is bring over the Ninja Trader version of the Black Box Breakout Indicator. Okay. I want to go through these. I did do a, a Facebook Live on the Black Box recently. Um, we have um, on the indicators on a multiple time frame dot cloud here, we're going down. Okay. It's only think or swim that is backwards. So again, for day trading, remember the first period is the one, the time frame that you are on right now. You can't change that. So then the period one on the settings, you go 10, 15, 20, 30, 30. That is day trading. That's all you need. You don't need to change it. Okay. Very, very simple. And then it works exactly the same. Okay. Uh, this, this is stocks, for example. Um, I'm only looking back a certain amount of days. So remember, on um, your data series for Ninja Trader, you need to look back around 200 days um, for this one, believe it or not. Um, so the multiple time frame dot cloud works. Okay. So again, every um, every platform has its own little things um, that, that, that that work in a slightly different way. Okay. But at the end of the day, the the strategy is the same. Okay. The strategy is exactly the same. So multiple time frame dot cloud, you've got a square above there, um, and it's exactly the same. It's in the cloud right now, so it's yellow. Okay, it was in the cloud here, it's yellow. It's below the cloud, it's all red. Okay, so this is low on the five minute. Yes, JD was going to make a, a video on the dot clouds, on everything, on the um, the uh, the watch list for TradeStation as well. I have to put it into radar screen and everything like that. You do not get the watch list on Ninja Trader because you ca they don't uh, they don't give us the facility to do that. Okay, now we are building our own very own smart list, which is cloud based, which will be on an app. So. First of all, we're going to release it for stocks, and later in the year, we're going to release it for futures. So no matter what platform you're using, you will get black box breakout signaled on an app on your phone. Um, and you, For stocks, we're going to start it with 20 tickers, and you'll be able to change, you'll be able to put up to 20 tickers in there, and you'll be able to change them once a month. Uh, for futures, uh, we I've got a meeting when I'm in Chicago uh, for a data uh, provided for that. Um, but this will be on the phone. So no matter what platform you've got, um, well, with alerts, yes, absolutely. We're going to try and so you've got a notification that it comes up that it makes a noise and tells you there's a signal on um, CL on the on the hourly or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, so again, it works exactly the same. Um, Elliott Wave, Black Box, everything like that. So let's put the tops up now. Why do I use Think or Swim? Okay, um, this, that, you know, this is personal preference, but Think or Swim was bought for half a billion dollars as a trading platform by TD Ameritrade. Okay, there's a lot of money invested in this. It's very powerful. The data's free. Okay, uh, and there's a lot of tools for it as well. Um, 
so you know our testing ground is think or swim we test everything all the uh, updates for everything and then we develop for the other platforms after that and follow what we do so our testing platform is think or swim if it works on think or swim we can then change it over to to, to other platforms um, so you know that's where we are now before we go any further i want to now at this moment in time can everybody see this i'm coming to kansas city for two days 19th 20th of october to conduct live training okay those 20 seats have been sold yes kai you're one of them neil you're another <laughs> um they've been sold now james has been to the hotel we can get 10 more okay 10 more people in that uh, in that room uh, so i'm going to give you the link in the chat if you haven't got it already this i can guarantee those 10 seats will be sold um pretty quick okay so we can get to 30 now we've literally overnight the 20th seat was sold okay um so the, everybody's got the latest version uh neil of uh the black box uh, whether it's trade station um or the elliot wave you know, whenever there's a new version come out, those have got a lifetime license, we send you. Um, uh, to be honest, no. At this time, just go, no. Uh, because we've got to go where we can fill a room. Yeah, so, um, so next year, we're going to be, um, we're going to be, let's see, we're going to be Houston, New York, somewhere in California and Kansas City again. Okay, now, because 80% of our users are from the US, could be LA, I don't know. The license isn't transferable, Scott, purely because it's a digital product, you can't give it back, okay? Uh, I wish you could, but it's not, okay? Um, so what we do do for a second license purchase, so a second platform purchase, we give you a 40% discount. But we can't, we can't be fairer than that because it is a digital product. It's not like receiving a cassette tape through the post and sending it back because you don't like it. Okay. You, once you've got it, you've got it, you can't give it back. Um, you know, I, I, I wish we had our own trading platform, but I haven't got half a billion dollars to develop a trading platform. So it's a good deal. And again, some people, I know some people, um, okay, the total cost uh, for the two platforms, the $499 each, okay, so just under $1,000 for both platforms, Dusko. Um, and then, um, I don't know about Washington, um, at the moment I'm just going on those four locations for now, Jeff. Um, but again, if you um, have a second platform, so I know some people, might want to change the Ninja Trader because it's a better broker, or vice versa to think of strings it's a better platform. Uh, we give that 40% discount on that thousand dollars. Okay, uh, so to get you up and running. Ella, I'm actually in San Francisco, but I'm not doing a class. Um, but uh, it could be San Francisco next year. We've got to choose somewhere uh, California based. So it could be San Francisco because most of my team live there for a start. Uh, and I love it as well. So it could be that could be a place we go next year. I think so. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, to be honest, LA San Francisco is not a big flight anyway, is it? The forty percent discount is for your second purchase. Okay. So if you want to purchase a second license um, for the same platform or a license for another platform um we give you that um okay so the thing to do for that is um to if you've already got a platform and you want a second license at 40 percent discount um you will have to email me and we produce a paypal invoice i'm going to put my uh email in the chat to trade the Paul at tradethefifth.com. Email me and we'll sort something out, okay? 
If you get a third license, Kai, because you've been cheeky, I'll give you a 60% discount, okay? Only if you've got a second license first. <laughs> As my dad. All right, the MT4 version has the full features for the Elliott Wave. It does not have black box breakout indicator because you don't need, you can't use black box on, um, on Forex. And may, most people use MT4 for Forex, okay? It's in Kansas. In October, it's the only one this year, and there's literally it was sold out as of last night. But we've added ten more seats. Nineteenth, uh, twentieth, yes. To be honest, I just wanted to test the water Ella uh, this year uh, to see. Um, to be honest, I'm really, really humbled by the amount of people who want to come. The emails I've had because uh, I've you know responded to everybody. Um, you know, so people are flying in to Kansas. Spend the weekend with me and James. I'm going to do some great trading. Uh, you know, we're going to have lunch and breakfast together. It's going to be great. Yeah, you don't. It won't work. Black box will not work, Frank, on forex because you don't get the volume that you need. No, you can't, Mahmoud. It's uh, in person only because it's two days and we can't stream it. I'm afraid. So MT4 version, fully functional version of the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite, um, as you know, as it works now. Because there are commodities on MT4, we will look to make a black box version, okay? Um, but it will only be good for commodities or indexes because that you get the data for uh, for volume there. Okay, uh, that's not in the plans right now. We're developing the same indicator suite for trading view, and then we're looking at some cool upgrades for the black box breakout indicator across the platforms in quarter three this year. Um, so you know, we, we you know we're human beings after all. You know, what I was told when I first came up with this idea, you would not be able to do it on Think or Swift. Um, but actually, we've done it for five platforms. We're just developing for the sixth one. Okay. So let's bring uh, let's bring um, James back on on the voice. Um, I'm back on. Okay. So there you go. So you can ask James some questions now as well. Sorry about the trade station, guys. You know. Never work with pets or software live. That's what it, that's what they say. <laughs> hey, anybody that has uh, booked the event for October nineteenth and twentieth, I put it in the chat box. Do not forget to call the hotel. It is NASCAR weekend that weekend, and if you've ever been to Kansas City, every hotel books out uh, around town. They have blocked out uh, the rooms for us but they will only hold them for so long before they'll start selling them off to someone else. So, and you do not have to worry about getting a rental car. It's literally seven minutes from the hotel and they offer a free shuttle to get over. And in my email guys, I've already said, if you get there in good time on the Friday, I'm there from Thursday night. Um, you know, that that's meet up in a hotel or somewhere close by. We'll organize it close to time and we'll, we'll all have dinner. Um, the hotel, uh, have you got the details? GW, the hotel yep. is, there we go, I've got it here. I'll put it in the chat box. It's the Hilton at Kansas Airport, there's the address and the telephone number there. Okay. So yes, I will be doing more um, in October, Kai. I will be doing more futures. 
But to be honest, the, the strategy is devoid of stocks or futures. It's about um, herd mentality. It's about how the market behaves. It's about volume. It's about price action. It's about the Elliott Wave rules, combining the black box, multiple time frame strategies, frame, framing the trend. Uh, you know, we'll even do something on trend reversals, uh, that sort of thing. OK, um, but I will do a section on blend investing because I said I think it's extremely important for you guys to understand that you need something longer term. Um, I, and I call it my sausage machine strategy. OK, so you need strong growth stocks. You need to look for pullbacks. You need to, you know, add, add two or three shares or whatever. And you start accumulating over the years some really good, strong growth in stocks. Okay. Uh, any more questions on anything? You know, if you want me to pull up the black box again on Think or Swim or the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite, uh, any more questions on there? Again, uh, James, uh, it's quite late for me here, so when James has done those videos, I'll get up in the morning and put them on. Okay, I mean, right, if you're, right, let's talk through a scenario. That's easier. Kidoki. Right, so day trading, three, two, three, five minutes, okay? If you want to trade 15 minutes, for me, you've got to be trading that either before the session opens or in the first two or three hours, okay? I, yes, I can do entry on the fifth wave as well. So, um, so if you're day trading, I'm at two, three, five minutes is the purest one for me, both on the Elliott Wave and uh, the black box. If you start to get above 15 minutes, 30 minutes, you've got to be prepared to babysit that baby because uh, anything, Trump tweet or anything, could take you out that while you're asleep. Okay? So for me, I only trade for the first three hours of the session anyway because I live in Europe. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. Um, I, I, I trade that, but I'm in Europe as well. So I can trade oil, I can trade gold um, and everything like that during my morning. That's not a problem. Uh, to be honest, at this moment, Al, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know if we're going to have a futures trading service or anything like that. Uh, what we want to concentrate on the education, on the, on the indicator suites and help people out. Uh, you know, memberships are fraught with people that um, say they can't follow your trades and uh, they're making losses. I, you know, I know a lot of people, uh, it's just, it's a minefield. So we're going to have to think about it during this next few months and see uh, how we, we can achieve something like that. Uh, and it may be that when we've built our smart list, um, we will be um, we we build a the smart list and it's in a membership area that gives the signals and then we have I don't know what, if you've seen them they call them um, squawks so we might so it's only one way so if a, if a signal comes up like this one for oil on the three minute one of the team will, will just come on the squawk in that, um, that membership area and say, CL looks really hot here for a short. What time frame was it, Ella? Um, was it the five minutes? Mm, wasn't five minutes. Two minute. So we do these webinars once a month to give you support because uh, there's always new people. Yeah, it's close, but not close enough. Okay. Um, right. So I've just got to go back. Let me just look at some of these other questions. Uh, okay. Entering a way four. Okay, entering away for so let's just go back to the five minute here. My futures aren't great at the moment, so there's it's going to be. Uh, let me just let it calculate. Okay, so now 
remember we've got some rules for the wave four. The first rule is the 535 pulls back between 90 and 140. So we've got to measure that. We're going to try and automate that in the next version, by the way. Uh, it's not that easy. Every time I say to the developer, I need this happening, he looks at me with a very, very crazy face. Uh, so we've got um, the 9140. We've got the stochastic crossing over the oversold zone. Okay. We're green on the, on the key time frame. Again, we're day trading. Key time frame is 30 minutes. We've got a wave four pullback into our zone. Okay. Just came below the cloud there, but you've got to look at the price action. We've got to see some real big indecision dojis here. Um, and the dojis that are high volume are both green. Okay, we've got a rejection of the lows here. We've got some indecision dojis there. Okay, so now we need to be getting ready. We, we, we've got the wave four posted. Next candle opens, where are we going to get an entry here? Where are we going to get an entry? Now, this is a very crappy range bound period here. So we've just got to use the six four moving average and the cloud. So our entry, and we've got yesterday's high at the green at 62.49, okay? Uh, you know, we, that could be resistance, so that's our entry. So we've got to, we've got to look at, in a different instance, yesterday's high might not even be there. So what we've got to look at this instance is, We've got the way four. Everything turns out at the bottom okay. Now we've got a, a, a not traditional entry is a six four moving average high, but we've got the um, the high from yesterday. Okay, so what do we do? For me, I always put my risk to reward on stop entry just above there. Okay, that is a one to one point two into the target zone for a day trade. Not bad. Uh, reasonable risk to reward there. Uh, put your stock just below the wave four. Entries just above yesterday's high, outside the six four moving average high, outside the cloud. That's my fifth wave move. So 62.49, and then one candle in, next candle through through there. Um, do you want to pull ride the wave, you know, pull back when we get 62.86? We've made nearly 40 ticks on oil in, in less than 10 minutes. That's right, Neil. So this is when we use a regression trend channel. Okay. Now it's going to be difficult for me to find with in this current market condition. So you're going to have to bear with me a little bit. Let's go to ES. Um, let's go to 60 actually. So if you wanted to trade forex, as in the euro, using a black box breakout indicator, the 60 futures is the way to go. Okay. Is definitely the way to go. Now, I can't tell you how good this is. <laughs> um, so 6E here, we've got the wave, <laughs> got the wave four pullback. You just look at, bear with me, look at the oscillator, just crowned here, okay, within 90 to 140. Stochastic, crossed over in the overbought zone. Multiple time frame isn't totally on our side, but when we get the black box signal, it is. So here we've got two different trades. We've got the wave four pullback, found resistance in the cloud, which is a non-linear resistance level, and our linear resistance level, which is the amber zone. Okay, everything ticks the box down below. We've got an entry strategy. The aggressive entry strategy is outside the 6-4 moving average low, okay, for this. And then we get a black box breakout signal here at 1.1264. Both are good trades and both hit the fifth wave target. Okay, let's go. Now, regression trend channel. We put that from 3 to 4. That is your aggressive entry, Neil. Yes, yeah, yeah. It, the, right, the zones are for pullbacks to measure the pullback, the not for entry. So if it pulls back and finds resistance in the green zone, there's an 85% probability it's going to go and make a new wave. 
five low. If it goes into the amber zone, 80%, red zone, 75%. But you can still enter in those zones. All it does is measure the pullback. Once the pullback's happened, it doesn't matter. You've got your entry. Uh, so three ways to do this. Uh, in this, can, can, you know, this is a really, really tight channel here. You can break out there. So you've got to think to yourself, you've got to talk to yourself. Traders should talk to themselves. Remember, one of the things I'm going to teach you in Kansas is your job is to find a reason not to get in the trade. If you can't find that reason, you're going to trade it. Okay? So put the regression trend channel on. You're going to talk to yourself now. Right, if it comes out of here, I'm still in the cloud. I'm still above the six full moving average high. What's my risk to reward going to be? Am I prepared to be very tight on this risk to reward? So this moment in time, my risk reward coming out of there is huge, okay? I'm not, it's uh, no sound. There should be. You can hear me? Anybody? Okay. Might be just you then. Um, so remember, every single trade is different. So for me here, this is too aggressive because I'm still in the cloud. I need to be out of the cloud. So all I do, once we've got the wave four, I'm going to look at a sensible entry below these lows, okay? Below these lows here and outside the six four moving average high. So at this point here, my entry is around about here. Oh, look at that, right near that uh, black box breakout, okay? So that's my entry there. My risk reward is one to, to one, one to two at that point. Now, as the candles progress, you can adjust this entry higher, okay? But then all of a sudden we break out, we get the black box breakout signal near our original entry. That's our entry in that instance, okay? Uh, let's see if we can find another example on NQ maybe. Oh, I'm not linked. Let me link. It is, but that that for, for day trading, if you don't ask one to one point two, depends on your risk appetite. Okay, uh, that was a one to two, so that was very very good. No, Damien, it can't work for forex at all because you don't get the volume. Black box really relies on a, an accurate volume data. It's going to be difficult to find here. Now, this is an example of which was a fourth wave move and a fifth wave. But obviously, time's moved on now, okay? Yes. Can you hear them? <laughs> That's on my other computer. I've got other futures on there. On my other, I've got two big trading computers and lots of monitors. That computer's in sort of sleep mode, but the alarms still keep going off. Um, so this was a third move. This was a way for the gradually entry strategy outside of here. Got the cloud there, but look there where it went. We can go to Ninja as well. Um, let's go to Ninja now on the Elliott Wave or whatever. So we'll go to Ninja Trader. Okay, so what do you want me to look at on Ninja Trader, John? Let me know. Do you want to go stocks? I can't go futures. I've not got the uh, data, I'm afraid. You know, I've got a lot of platforms and I am not spending five grand a month on data or whatever it's going to cost. Okay. They work the same way, really. Uh, they're just harder to trade unless you're in Europe and you can trade CFDs. Um, but isolating on here is exactly this, is, is so easy. You, you click, press F5, uh, and get the, the Elliott Wave count, which is really, really cool. Okay. Uh, I do like it like that. Um, so clicking, press F5, and you isolate on Ninja Trader, which is really great. Uh, I can't show you futures on here because, as again, I don't have the data. But everything works exactly the same. Do you have any questions, John, on 
so each platform has its own nuances. So, for example, to isolate the wave count on um, NinjaTrader, we can use, we can left click and press F5. On Think or Swim, we have to take the bar count and we have to um, change the bar count. On TradeStation, we have to use the analysis commentary tool. Uh, we have to left click first, press the analysis commentary tool, get the bar count and format the analysis technique and put the start bar in there. On MT4, we click reset and left click. So those are the little nuances that, that I meant. The strategy works the same, it's just the way we um, edit or enable or disable some of the functions or isolate the wave count. That's what I meant uh, by those. Yeah, so uh, that's, that's just, let me just take the data set uh, back a bit. Um, let's just go 10 days a minute. I'm just doing that so it's quicker, okay? Let's go Apple, just for an example. So this has been going one way. So if I want to, for example, I've got, I've got this day there, it's really range bound. And then the next day we're up and down like a roller coaster. That's a bit of a trend. So if I left click at the top here, press F5, you get the wave count. I mean, there's, there's different ways. So do you, does that make sense, John? Um, you, you can lit you literally left click, press F5, and it recalculates for you. And you need to look for those current highs and lows. So uh, you can, right, how do you trade the wave three? I'll tell you why, uh, what I do is 60% of the fifth wave moves I trade turn into third waves because you've got to remember the rules. The wave three is never the shortest, and in most cases, it's the longest. So when your fifth wave becomes longer than your original third wave, it reprints the third wave, okay? Uh, that's how to get in the third wave. But yes, we do, and we will be going through that in Kansas City when we talk about day trading. Um, we will be talking about trading that third wave with uh, the black box concurrence and, and the sort of setups you should be looking at. Okay, um, so it, it is possible. Uh, there's just quite a lot of more things to look at, um, and it takes some practice. Okay, it, 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 and you can get the thing is with third wave, you never know when it's going to end. <laughs> it can end abruptly, and you get that wave four pullback and get caught out. Now, it's easier to let the one, two, three, four happen, all the rules are met, all the, bo the, all the, the boxes are ticked, uh, the fifth wave is the highest probability move. And sometimes it just keeps going, it turns into a third wave, and you just keep managing that trade. Anything else on Ninja Trader, John? I'm sorry I haven't got futures on here, uh, I just have to, to draw the line at, at you know, a lot of things, really. Um, with with data because I, I run I've got um, a very expensive um, data cost with my institutional grade software because I still trade um, stocks longer term through there so you know uh, no Neil fifth wave is slightly different um, Okay, brilliant, John. That would be brilliant. I mean, honestly, it's going to be worth, you know, meeting the mad Englishman for two days because uh, th this software is basically based on my last 15 years and what I do, what I trade. You know, I wasn't a big money manager. It was only 18 million, uh, but I made good money um, and, and I was consistent. And, I, and basically, we turned that into a bit of software, which is brilliant. Brilliant. So trading stops, let's go for, so Neil, I'm gonna use some stocks examples again, um, because I wanna change it up a little bit for everybody. I've done a lot of futures, so what I wanna do is find my stocks. Uh, recent one that's hit. Um, I'm looking at Cisco at the moment as well, by the way, for this wave four occurring here. 
Yeah, once you get to the fifth wave, you've got to let it run with training stops because it can push through and keep going. So you'd use, if it was a long, you'd use a six full moving average, low as your training stop position, uh, or short, the six full moving average high. You can then go more aggressive, and I'll teach you some more aggressive techniques. Uh, in um, We'll do a whole trade management section in, in, in October. You know, we do two balls behind and, and all that sort of stuff. It, um, we do quite a bit of trade management techniques. But I just want to show you where the, where the markets are as well right now. Remember I showed you that wave four pullback that's just forming on the S. A lot of the big stocks are in that exact same uh, sequence in the earlier wave. Okay. So you look at Cisco here, nice wave for pullback here. Oscillator's just on the cusp of failing though, um, but we've got earnings coming up, and this is what then pushes. Now, if you've got enough earnings coming in that are really good, that will trump the Trump tweets, okay, and the Trump tariffs. So there could be a really, really good um, situation where we get that wave for support on ES, um, and we seem to find support on a lot of these stocks. I mean, there's a lot of them. Home Depot is another one on the daily. And this is how I also measure uh, how the markets are behaving as well. I look at some of these big Dow exponents, big S&P, all that sort of stuff. Uh, you know, when I see that coincidence with the major indexes, I, this is why at the moment I'm out of all of my swing trades. I've made... 650% profit times risk on the swings this month, 1290 uh, last month. I'm good for this quarter. Why take the risk? I've closed the rest out today. I'm waiting for all these pullbacks. I ain't being patient. <laughs> these colorful lines are the volume. Okay, Allah. So when you are on stocks, for example, you go to equities and you check show volume subchart, okay? And you can do the same on futures. So let's go to ES here. Okay, so we go to the cog, we go to futures, we click show volume subchart, we click apply, and there's the volume, okay? But what we try to do is clean up people's charts so you'll see now that you will see these um, cyan, which is, matches the cyan on the, um, the volume there. So just by these candles, you can see which a high volume moves up, high volume moves down. Are they followed through? Absolutely. Here you can see these are followed through. Momentum's really starting to come down. Today uh, on ES, we can see this is a down move. So far, this is lower volume, which pretty good to me, okay? We could get consolidation tomorrow with lower volume again. We Usually when you find these wave four pullbacks, you'll start to see the volume start to taper off. You, you see this could be, could be a little gray candle tomorrow. Then we get a little cyan and then we find support. Then you'll start to see the move up. Okay, so that's whether it's on a daily 15, 5, 1, or 30 second chart. Right, okay, so let's go for, uh, yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. So let's go for the key time frame. Um, let's just put um, this one back on. Uh, okay, so this is again for those who think of swim. This is my flexible grid on stocks breakouts. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my 30 minute, which has not got Elliott Wave on, it's just the black box. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to look at the 30 minute settings. Okay, and then we'll do 15, Scott. So key time frame is key. Okay, um, so on the 30 minute, remember the top row of dots is always default to the time frame that you're on. So that's 30 minutes, you can't change that. The next one is an hour, then two hours, then four hours, then daily, weekly. Now you can, remember this daily isn't showing because it's blank. So what we can do, we can change that to daily, to be honest. I've been playing around with these, you can tell. Uh, and we'll click okay, click apply, but it's gonna be the green anyway. So on 30 minutes, 
we've got hour, two hour, four hour, day, day. Okay. Now, one of the things we are looking to do in the third quarter this year on our black box renewals is take all of this manual stuff off your hands and just give you a bias subchart for day trading, for intraday. By intraday, I mean 30, 60, 120 type time frames, and then swing trading, which will be daily time frames. So we're going to take all of this uh, having to change stuff away from you, okay? Because I've seen that this is a little bit of a problem. For me, it's second nature, boom, 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 boom. But what I want to do in uh, the third quarter is develop something different and then sort of roll it out towards the end of the year where all you select is your day trading or all you select is that your intraday or all you select is swing trading. And it will give you that bias type. I don't know how it's going to look yet, um, but it will give you that so you won't have to do that. So let's go to 15 minutes now. So let's change to 15 minute chart. Okay. Now, this is very, very simple here. So now we change to 30 hour, two hour, four hour, which is not seen, and daily. Okay, now if you want to be a little bit more accurate, you can go to four hour there. Okay, but I, for me, anything 15 minutes or above, I like to see what's happening on the daily time frame. Um, so for me, that would be the daily time frame there. Right, when or if we release it, futures will just be uh, futures. At the moment, the day trading membership is for stocks. Uh, and at this moment in time, uh, because of the markets, there's no real great signals on the, on the um, that we use. So um, the day trading membership at the moment is for stocks only. Not everybody can do that because it's about having uh, good margin, uh, uh, even um, or a big account balance. And so we are going to look for 15 minutes. Um, you know, uh, sorry, <laughs> we're all we're going to look to to do that uh, futures membership when we can automate everything. Um, so you've got literally got a list of um, futures contracts, three, two, three, five minutes, for example, uh, or even just five minutes, and then it will be a live squawk thing. So in theory. If a black box breakout signal comes out for, for ES and we don't think it's any good, somebody will come on the squawk and say, guys, just be careful on this one. It looks like a good signal, but uh, look left, look at the big support level, or you know, it's at it's a the 280 half of the day. I don't think it's got much juice left in it. I wouldn't, you know, it was something like that, Neil. And we're still working on that. Um, uh, but again, I, I, that's not going to be released just yet because I, I, I haven't got the meetings about the data for futures until I'm in Chicago. Um, you know, I, I'd love to to uh, to do everything right now. It's just impossible. Um, so, guys, we're going to have to call it a day soon. It's 8:15 uh, p.m. here uh, in Europe. Um, I've had my office door closed. And I've not got the aircon on, so it is pretty warm in here. Uh, good for my weight loss. Um, so any more questions before we go? Uh, James, if you want to come back on. Um, I'm here. Okay. So have you got anything you want to, to say, James? Um, anything in particular on, on TradeStation or Kansas or anything like that? I know people have been asking for other, you know, other states and everything like that, but we just have to be careful that we don't spend – a lot of money on a venue and not many people turn up. So <laughs> exactly what it's uh, what we're trying to do is find uh, space that is close to an airport so that you don't have to worry about a rental car to try to keep your expenses down for the trip. Um, we'll come up with those dates later this year. Um, probably closer to that October date. We'll lay out some 2020 dates. Yeah, and I don't, I don't want to do them every month. I want to do them every quarter because I want to come 
you know, James is going to take on a lot more of the training role, but I, I want to be there as well. He's my, he's my baby. I like to meet people. Uh, I like to get away from my wife, come back to, come back to the USA for a while. <laughs> so, um, you know, so, you know, I think one a quarter will be uh, uh, quite sufficient, really. Uh, and, you know, we, that's just this type of training, you know, this, I've got other ideas, right? You know, but um, I, you know, I've got to sport, speak to the team about them. But there'll be lots, lots of other opportunities to do stuff as well, not just training. We we might hold live one week training events where we all train together for a week, and I come over there and you know we get some training done. You know, there's, it could be things like that. I don't know yet. Um, so you know. You know, I quite like the idea of spending a week with a room full of people and trading. I, I, it's just, you know, imagine a room full of 400 people and everybody's going short on ES at the same time. That's going to move markets. <laughs> That's better than any bot. 400 people in the same room all going short when Paul says that is going to be some volume. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, JW is going to do the radar scanner and everything like that. Yeah, I'll go through everything on TradeStation today. I will shoot a video, separate one, so you don't have to sit there and watch, you know, an hour-long video. You can break them up. And I'll put loading the indicators, uh, downloading them from your email, loading them on. I've had a few people run into uh, issues of uploading them. Um, I'll shoot, do that, and then setting up your screen, setting up the settings for each one and then saving it because if you don't, uh, you'll lose your whole workspace and you'll have to start over again. Yeah. Now they will be posted on the Facebook group, but they're posted from YouTube. So we've got the YouTube channel. Okay. Um, and then as four people subscribe again. So on the channel here, you will see we, we have playlists. And we've got a trade station playlist. So on there, we can you can look at all the videos on the playlist there as well. Um, hey everyone, it's JW. Oh, there's JW there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they will be on the YouTube channel, and they will be on the Facebook group. Uh, Chuma, I will, uh, I will make some videos for, for Ninja Trader too. Yes. I've just got, there's a lot to do. Um, there's loads when you look on our website. Oh Lord. Okay. So on the website, let's just go through the website a minute because there's lots of all of these webinars for the last year and a bit are in the memberships area and they're for free, okay? So, no, not the memberships, the courses, what am I talking about? Okay, so the May webinar will be up here in the next day or so. So April webinar, January webinar, setting up your think or swim charts, for example, if you access, press access now, go down, click on the curriculum lecture 1.1, setting up your think or swim webinar, okay? You can watch them there. There is loads and loads of stuff on here for, for Think or Swim, um, okay? Loads, just go to there. But also, guys, you, we produce a lot of content on the blog. I produce trading journals um, which talk about how, you know, they were, um, you, you know, what the futures, the perfect futures trading setup. Uh, I've got trading journals on, on stocks. There's some on uh, futures there, uh, ETFs. Uh, there's, you know, there's literally pages and pages and pages of articles on there. All good. And this is the five hot stocks that I chose on the 30th of December 2018 to trade this year as a trial to see if part-time traders can choose five stocks that are good growth stocks and trade them all year time. So. All, this is my full series of all the trades I've done on these stocks, which have been live. I've sent their signals out there trading. I just, you know, 
so there's loads and loads of stuff on the blog for you guys to learn from and in the courses section loads that's where all the free webinars are where all the all the recordings are and everything like that okay and yes Elliott Wave is brilliant for Forex and I'll tell you what a lot of Forex traders use uh, very low time frames um, so let's just go to um, US dollar cat okay so this is the five minute time frame right now let me just zoom out a little bit this is the MT4 version by the way go to the lows <laughs> You're welcome, Jeff. I do free daily videos for for, uh, for stocks every day uh, because I can I can predict. I've got a I haven't got a crystal ball, but I can predict better. Uh, MT4 is ready now. It's ready, Kai. It's ready to go. We, we it is for sale, and you can and you can lease it. It's, uh, it's you know it's not on the website yet, um, but it is. You know the sales pages are done. Yes, yeah, uh, Forex trade is brilliant. I mean, even on, on one minute, um, Forex traders use one minute uh, a lot, uh, and you can get in and out trades really well there. Um, but yeah, it works very well. Let me give you the link for the MT4 version. Um, MT4. Okay. The good thing about MT4 is you can take it to any platform. Okay. So MT4 is a platform which all European and Asian brokers use. So this is IC Markets. But the, M the, the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite is for MT4. So if you open a new account with uh, another Forex broker, you just change broker, your MT4 still works. <laughs> still the same. Um, you know, there's a lot of things it doesn't work for, but it's brilliant for Forex. Really is brilliant for Forex um, MT4. So, you know, it's a, it's a great tool. Look at here on the one minute US dollar Japanese yen pulled back on a wave four. For me, the entry wouldn't be above there and I'd be scalping because um, that pivot point there. Uh, but oscillator's good down here. Stochastics crossed over. It's not got a false breakout, so it's not a strong trend, but it's only a one minute time frame. Uh, so I'd be looking for entry just above that pivot there and I'd be looking to scalp the fifth wave target there. Um, so yeah, it works extremely well for, uh, um, for uh, you know, for Forex, you know, I actually write, uh, I don't know if you've heard of dailyfx.com, it's a big website, about 4 million people view it a day. I write a weekly article on there and all I'm using is the MT4 platform for those, okay? So I, I write a, 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 an analysis article each week, either on Forex or a commodity and I use the MT4 platform for that analysis. Um, so, so yeah. Okay, as long as if there's no more questions, guys, um, do you want to say goodbye, James, and then we'll get going? All right, guys, it was hopefully my uh, technical abilities, I'll be able to figure it out next time. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, I'll be working on those videos this afternoon. Like you said, Paul will have them up tomorrow, and uh, that should take some headaches out of some of the installation issues on TradeStation and just working your way around it. I appreciate you bringing me on, Paul. Uh, it was an honor for you to reach out to me, and it's been nice helping people. I'm getting tweets this morning from uh, folks that have made profit, that uh, making their money back on the first day or second day of trading, which is really awesome uh, to see those tweets that in that short of a time frame to, you know, so. Yeah. 
Well, I really am glad you've joined us, James. I'm, I'm excited. You know, we speak every day now. You know we are. Look at that, guys. Is it the fifth wave target in less than a minute? Who said it doesn't work for Forex? US dollar, Japanese yen. Look at that. Bloody perfect. Love it. Uh, but yeah, James, great guy. Um, he's taken to the indicator suite extremely well. Sometimes uh, for some people that are that have been trading for a while, it's difficult to accept um, the simplicity uh, and the, the discipline of the rules. If you follow the rules, you make money. Okay. The main thing is you don't get in unless the rules are there and they were all ready to go. <laughs> Paul, so, I'll tell you the the mindset has been the the biggest one that you have to work on with using this software. But, um, being a mastermind member from OTA, uh, a Bob Dunn signature graduate, I'm always wanting to pull the trigger every day on something when the market opens. <laughs> and it's like today, I've been getting tweets from people and they're like, hey, are you in this? And I'm like, nope. I was like, the Elliott wave tells me that I, I literally just sit back and I wait for the fifth wave moves. And like you mentioned earlier, I might not make a trade today. But when I do make one, I pull out a lot of ticks with a lot less risk and make some money on it. And that's just changing the mindset has been the biggest thing for me of not having to pull the trigger, you know, five times a day. I may not make one today, but tomorrow or the next day will be a nice, you know, 400 tick move on gold or something else and uh, make up for it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, again, it, I said this earlier, as a trader, you've got to find reasons not to gain a trade. You don't start drawing lines and things all over the chart to, to give you confidence to get in a trade. It's, that's not the idea. If a rules-based system is you've got to have all those boxes checked before you get in the trade, okay? Um, so the stochastic has to pull, over, pull, uh, pull back, cross over in the oversold zone here. The, the 535 has got to be between 90 and 140. It's got to be in the pullback zone. And there it goes. It, on a one-minute chart on Forex, US dollar, Japanese yen, it hits the fifth wave target. Okay? And if it, doesn't, if it doesn't set up right, you don't get in. It's as simple as that. Because the markets are open over and over again. So I may not have any swing trades on stocks, for example, the rest of this month. But I'm fine. Because I, I made hay when the sun shines. I put no new orders on for a week. I've gradually taken profits on the ones that I got off. And now I'm clear. I'm sitting in good profit. The day trades are a bit slow on the stocks. They've been okay on the futures. Um, you know, and it's about, it's about choosing your battles, really. And you've got to be disciplined. Um, and military people, like ex-military people like myself, um, find that easy. Rules-based systems. Uh, check, 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 fire. Okay? It's about actually sticking to the rules. Okay? And don't try and bend the rules. Don't try and draw a line on the chart and put an RSI on and say, I tell you what, actually, this makes it look like a good trade. I've developed this software and this strategy. So you don't need anything else whatsoever. You just need these, you, you know, you need the Elliott Wave or the Elliott Wave in the black box. You don't need anything else whatsoever. And what I do in my training courses and then teach people is um, – how to frame the chart, multiple time frame strategies uh, to give you some concepts on uh, some really good non-linear and, and, and linear support resistance levels. So, you know, uh, looking forward to Kansas. Hopefully, uh, guys, if you're thinking about it, get on there. We literally, I am not, uh, I'm an English guy. I don't lie. Okay. We have sold 20 seats already and we've only just launched it today. Okay. So it is ama it's amazing how many people uh, want to come and spend some time with me and, and, and you know, get to grips to this. Uh, and, you know, my goal is to help people go full time. James JW has gone full time. And a lot of that is down to uh, being able to get to grips with this really quickly. Um, and, and that's what I want for everybody. I live near the beach in the south of Spain. Why? Because I've been consistently profitable and I know when not to get in a trade. And that's the whole idea there. It's about being disciplined. Uh, I have made a trade today. All I've done is close some swing trades and I'm happy. 
you know, uh, it will be open again tomorrow, those markets, and the day after, and the day after that. Oh yeah, I mean, most people email me, Neil, and say, I've made my money back on the first trade. Maybe I should charge more money, I don't know. <laughs> uh, James's email is jwsnell at tradethefifth.com. jwsnell at tradethefifth.com, there you go. Oh, you beat me to it, James. Yep. Okay. <laughs> and I'll just let everybody know I'm only one person and I do day trade. Uh, I, I'm an active trader every day. So uh, give me a little bit of time to respond back. And don't forget that, Paul, what are you, about eight hours ahead of us? Uh, uh, yeah, it's um, it's 8.30 p.m. here. So yeah. after 6 p.m. my time, I, tr I don't answer emails because my wife will absolutely throttle me. Um, so I get up at seven o'clock the next morning and I now work till, you know, whenever. Um, but you know, you will get an answer within 24 hours guys. Okay. Yep. And if you, if anybody on central time, so eight 30 is when the open, um, from seven 30 in the morning to about 10 30, uh, I usually won't reply back to messages. So don't think I'm avoiding you that I'm just trying to concentrate on trading. Yes, Kai, we do have somebody on the West Coast. Our development team is on the West Coast, Silicon Valley. Um, but, um, you know, we will look, uh, you know, maybe, maybe in the future, Kai. Right, guys, it's been great. I, I've really actually enjoyed this. Um, and do you know what? I really like a fifth wave move being hit like this one on the one minute on the US dollar, Japanese yen. And, and, you know, I didn't tee this up. I just put a chart up there, saw the opportunity, uh, and that was the trade. So it's really, really, really good. Okay, so I'm going to stop the recording.